Look at me. If you don't want me to come, I'll get out. Where I'm going is dangerous. Let's look death in the eye then, shall we? It occurs to me in the beginning of 1923, we see a lot of Elizabeth being told, like, you don't know what it's like to actually be a rancher's wife, right? I think Alex must really, really not know what it's like. Do you think she has any idea about what's coming up, what's ahead of her? I think she has no idea, but I think that she is the type of gal to take anything and give it her best, give it her all, you know? Like, she is that girl. She from the jump. I don't necessarily know what I'm doing or why, but I know what I want and I'm gonna get it and I'm gonna master it. Wherever she lands, I think that she's gonna be great at it. They're very much in the honeymoon period of their relationship and it's all very romantic and obviously reality is going to happen at some point for them, even more than it already has. Do you think she has any regrets so far? Do you think she's had any moments of regret? I talked a lot about that with Ben, our director along the way. Yeah, we did want to sprinkle in some moments of realistic doubt because it is this kind of grand gesture that she's done by running to the car and running away with him. That was authentic to her in the moment. Alexandra! Please drive. But when the danger hits, you know, after the lions, that scene in the back of the car, I think there's a moment of like, whoa, 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 I don't want that. I don't want that. Do you understand me? I don't ever want to feel like that again. For a long time, that was the only way I could feel. Until I met you. They're figuring each other out and what this crazy connection is that they have along the way. And so, yeah, I think that we will see moments of doubt. And I think we, you know, we watch them work through those things together and we watch their love evolve into this really different thing as time goes on, this, this more mature, you know, more fleshed out type of love. I love Alex. I love her. I love her. <laughs> yeah. um, and part of what I love, she's so self-possessed you know what i mean like she can she can give as good as she takes from spencer it said you killed one with your bare hands <laughs> believe everything you hear i knew what i wanted to be true why would you want that to be true for the romance of it we don't know a ton about her background right what do you think or have you had any conversations with the writers or producers like what gives her that pluck for lack of a better word i think it's just the natural desire for any woman really to want more for themselves you know what i mean and it's something that i related to as a modern woman growing up i was always told by society that I had to be quiet or I had to be this or I had to just smile and take it, whatever. It's like that internal thing of like, wait, no, I want what the boys have. I want what that, I want what that is. This ball of fire exists in her. Um, I know she grew up with a, a brother who, who we find out died in the war. And so I grew up with two older brothers. I think that has something to do with it because, you know, you just want what your sibling has. And, and especially when they're men, it's like, I'm gonna do that too. <laughs> I challenge you. <laughs> but so I think, I think it just exists inside of her and she lets it rip. Seems I want to show you something actually means I found a new place to ravage you. You notice that? <laughs> yes, I've detected the pattern. Talk to me about cavorting on a beach for, I'm assuming which was a long shoot, right? It was so crazy. We shot all the beach stuff in two days. Pretty quick, um, it flew by, but it was so funny because it was honestly the easiest part of filming for us. We had the time of our lives. We were like little kids splashing around in those waves. Like you could not get us out of the water. We were in there all day. They heard making people were yelling at us, be like, we need to apply sunscreen, get out yeah. of the water. And they were like, nope, like if you wanna, you can come get us, but you're not gonna. And so we, like, we were just playing in the water for two days straight. And then our director would be like, okay, action. And we'd be like, all right, here we go. And it, so it just felt really like natural and fun. And I think it, you know, aided the scenes because we were just so relaxed. That's so funny. You can tell I'm like old and not romantic anymore because I'm like, oh, her skin, she's going to burn. Get her out of, get her out of the direct sun. It's so funny. I saw everybody say that, but I, I look like, I look like somebody who would burn really badly, but I, I, Sneakily, I'm Italian and I don't, I don't burn. And my, but the hair and makeup people were the same way. They were all like, Julia's gonna fry. And I was like, I promise you, I won't. I promise. <laughs> so Jack said, Who needs a horse? And he yanks his saddle off the bronc and marches it over to the milk cow. <laughs> 
the scene that closes out that episode, um, reading the letters is, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's also gutting, right? Brandon said you guys shot it a couple different ways, especially the last letter. What's your big memory from shooting that? We shot that whole scene. We took an entire day to shoot it, which was really nice. We had the luxury of time. My favorite part about that day was once we got to the letter reading portion, Brandon and I just stayed on the bed with all the letters around us and we're with each other and got into those moments. And then when the laughter came, you know, him and I are so close. And so he would like pick my nose and then we'd start laughing and then <laughs> like start rolling the cameras. It was amazing. And just being able to have that intimacy with somebody you trust and a scene partner was really special, I think. And it just was really free flowing and creative. And it was, it was a special day for sure. Love is lovely, right? And it's relationships can be healing. But Spencer's also got like a very deep well of PTSD uh -huh. that we barely touched on in the show so far. How much of that is she aware of? I mean, obviously, she's not she's not dumb, but like that's one of those things I feel like we have yet to see the brunt of, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that she's certainly aware of it. And I think she's certainly keeping an eye on it. She's really keyed into him and what's going on internally, which I think is part of the reason why she's so disarming for him. But yeah, I mean, that does rear its ugly head. And that's something that they have to figure out together. And she's got to figure out how to handle and also how to process it for herself. And uh, figure out what that means for her and for their relationship. So it definitely comes up, yeah. Before I let you go, um, what can you tease about how she'll interact with the Duttons? I'm thinking particularly of Kara, who does not suffer anyone, right? What can you tease about, about how she'll kind of, her first impressions of the Duttons? I like to think that, that she's gonna love them. You know, she loves Spencer, and I think she will love anyone who is of Spencer. And, you know, there's that line, I think it's in episode three, where <laughs> Spencer's like, my family's gonna love you. And I just think, I think they would love her. I think that, you know, I would hope that ball of fire that lives within all of the Yellowstone women in Taylor's universe. I think it exists in Alex too. And I think that's part of the draw for Spencer.